Hello folks and welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing uh, a test on the Bofang uh, UV18 Pro Max which is uh, one of the latest uh, radios that I've got. Um, did a brief test on it before just uh, outlining you know its capabilities and that but uh, Today I wanted to actually measure the uh, RAF power output on it. Um, I know there's been quite a bit of interest in that. And especially since this radio is very much a rival for the long established uh, UV17 Pro uh, GPS radio. Uh, as a lot of people may know, the Bofang UV17 Pro GPS uh, had a fatal flaw uh, in that it wouldn't uh, TX properly on the 1.25 meter band. Um, the power output was negligible, negligible, maybe a fraction of a watt, uh, and it wasn't uh, outputting on the uh, 1.25 meter band. Um, so today we're going to just uh, test that and uh, see exactly what is going on here and hopefully that that fault in the 17 Pro uh, GPS has been rectified in the new uh, UV18 Pro Max which has the same specification as the 17 Pro GPS. They're both multiband with airband receive and they both have a GPS capability built into them as well. So pretty much identical. The only difference between them is that uh, the new uh, UV18 Pro Max doesn't have a flashlight on it. The flashlight has been replaced by uh, the GPS module on the top. There's no flashlight on the bottom of it. But uh, the UV17 Pro does retain the flashlight. Uh, on the bottom of the radio. So uh, without further ado we'll uh, get uh, to testing and I think we'll start off with uh, the uh, UV17 Pro GPS just to demonstrate that it actually has a flaw in the 1.25 meter band. I've got two of them. Uh, one's obviously the orange case and the black case but they are both uh, UV17 Pro GPS radios. So the device we're going to be using to test them is this little gadget here. Um, this is the Surecom uh, SW33 uh, power meter. Uh, very nice little gadget. I've uh, just received it on the post this morning. Um, very handy. I think you know like, uh, every uh, amateur radio operator who has a handheld radio should think about purchasing one of these little things. Uh, I bought it on uh, AliExpress. It cost me about £35. Uh, that's probably about $45, I suppose. And that was in, including uh, delivery and taxes to the UK. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can purchase it. But uh, a really excellent little piece of kit. It can measure uh, uh, forward RRF and reflected RRF power as well as uh, SWR. So if you want to test your antennas as well for the SWR, you can do that as well with this little gadget. Um, comes with uh, very accessories. It didn't come with that dummy load. I bought that uh, dummy load uh, separately because it does come with a dummy load in the package. But uh, as we can see here, it's it's pretty a uh, low wattage one. It can only handle up to five watts, which is probably okay if you're testing something with a fairly low output on it. But a lot of uh, even the handheld radios can go over five watts, so uh, uh, it would probably do. You know, if you if you're just uh, uh, just flicking the PTT on for a second or that, but I mean with only five watts capability, it would overheat pretty quickly. So uh, not not uh, the most useful dummy load, but at least they do include one in the package, uh, and they also include uh, various accessories. As we can see here, um, there's a charger unit comes with it and a, a charger cable is included. 
plus various adapters. There's a BMC male and a BMC female. There's an SMA uh, female to male and uh, SMA male to male, which is the one you need for testing your bowfang antenna. So good little, uh, good little kit that comes uh, all packaged together. Uh, as I say, I would recommend you get a better dummy load. Uh, this one is a, a, a 25 watt uh, a dummy load I have here uh, so I can test you know other radios that I have that maybe have a higher uh, output. A uh, little uh, charging port on the top there so you can uh, it's rechargeable quite sturdily made it's a metal body on it as well so uh, uh, excellent little piece of kit, very easy to use, no calibration or anything to do with it. You just uh, screw it in and switch it on and it works straight out of the box. So we'll start uh, by testing the uh, UV17 Pro uh, GPS and uh, see what kind of power output we're getting with it. Um, just screw the little <coughs> meter in there and switch it on. You hold it down for about three seconds and it's uh, ready. Now the little tick, it has a little tick there uh, as we see on that side and that indicates what mode you're in. So you have to uh, cycle through the mode until you get that little tick up to the top and that indicates that you're in uh, reading the power uh, the forward SWR, I beg your pardon, the, the forward uh, uh, TX uh, power RF output. So we're going to test uh, the Bofang uh, 17 Pro GPS first. Uh, we'll switch her on and uh, frequency mode. we're in frequency mode and the frequency we've got there is uh, 145. We'll put in one. one. Four, five, four, five, five zero, zero, zero. And that's the two meter uh, calling channel in the UK. Um, we're going into a dummy load here, so we're not going to be causing any interference or anything, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a test now and see what sort of power output we're getting on two meters with the UV17 Pro GPS. There we go, and it's a very respectable uh, 5.4 watts on two meters. So we'll uh, recalibrate again, and uh, the next one we're, we'll try will be a uh, 70 centimeter band. So we'll go four, four three, three, five, zero, zero. Okay, so that's the 70 centimeter uh, calling channel for the UK. So we'll give that a go and see what uh, our power output we're getting on 70 centimeters. And once again, we're getting a very respectable 5.1 watts on 70 centimeters. So now the one, the critical one with uh, the UV17 Pro GPS is the 1.25 meter band. Um, so we'll put in a frequency for that. We'll put in 220. Two, two, two. Uh, beg your pardon. Zero. 220. Which is uh, the start of the uh, 1.25 meter band. This will be of interest uh, to people in the USA in particular. Um, it's not a band that we can transmit on here in the UK. It's not allocated to us. But in uh, the US it, uh, it is quite uh, popular. So anyone who has uh, uh, a UV17 Pro GPS would be interested in the test results of this. So we're going to push the push to talk now on the 1.25 meter band and absolutely nothing we're not even getting a reading on uh, the uh, 1.25 meter band it's not registering uh, so there's obviously no power going to uh, 220 on the UV17 Pro and just to uh, double check that We'll uh, try it on the second UV17 Pro GPS that I have here, the orange one. So, we'll take our meter off here. Zero, 
and we'll apply it to the orange bodied version of the 17 Pro GPS. On we go. Frequency mode. Okay. So we're on two meters there. We'll do a quick test on that one just to, to prove that uh, it's working okay. So we'll press our uh, PTT button here and see what we get. Yeah, another respectable 5.4 watts on two meters. So we'll try it now on uh, the seven uh, on. Uh, We'll try it on the uh, 1.25 meter band, so we'll go into frequency mode here, put in 220. Two, two, zero, 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 zero. Okay, and once again, we'll see what we're getting when we hold down the push to top. Nothing, not, not, a, not, a, not even registering on the meter. So uh, there we see we have the fatal flaw in the UV17 Pro GPS in that it cannot uh, transmit on the 1.25 meter band. Uh, as I say, that is a concern for anybody in uh, the United States that uh, uses that uh, band. Uh, not so much here in the UK, obviously, but uh, definitely a concern for those in the United States. So we've got our uh, UV18 Pro Max here, um, again pretty much identical spec to the UV17 Pro GPS, different body style obviously, uh, but uh, the specifications are the same, it's multi-band, uh, can do airband receive and it has GPS built into it as well, so uh, very much um, identical radio. So we'll turn her on here, get into uh, testing our power output, turn her on here. Frequency mode. Now uh, we're on the 70 centimeter band there, calling channel for the UK 433-500, we'll do a quick power test on that. There we go, getting a respectable 5.1 watts there. So on 70 centimeters, so we'll try it on uh, 2 meters. And we'll 1, 4, 5, 5, 0, 0. Okay, so let's see what we're getting on uh, 2 meters. And again, a very respectable 6 watts there on uh, 2 meters. Now, um, the critical one here to see if Bofang have addressed the fault that was in the 17 Pro GPS on uh, 1.25 meters. So we'll put in the uh, 1.25 meter frequency here. Two, two, two zero. zero, 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 zero. Okay, and we'll give it a test with the 18 Pro Max. There we go. 5.9 watts, so no problem at all with uh, the uh, uh, UV18 Pro Max. It is, it's transmitting on uh, 1.25 meters, no problem at all. So definitely if you're in America and uh, uh, 1.25 meters is something that uh, is important to you then I'm afraid the UV17 Pro GPS just won't cut it and I would recommend that instead you uh, buy the uh, UV18 Pro Max which is the, the new model out from Bofang as I say it has no issue at all uh, on 1.25 meters whereas sadly the 17 Pro GPS has a fatal flaw in it that it will not uh, give a meaningful output on uh, 1.25 meters. So there you have it folks. Um, did promise to do the power test on the 18 Pro Max and I'm very happy to report that it is uh, uh, 
functioning perfectly on uh, 2 meters, 70 centimeters and 1.25 meters if that is your thing. So thanks for watching the video folks, just a quick one today uh, to do that power test on the UV18 Pro Max. Um, if you like the video give me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to. But uh, that's it for now and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.